So here's how you change a pressed in ball joint on a not Honda Accord or Honda Civic or Acura and not on a four wheel drive vehicle just your basic kind. Now I don't have any special tools like a ball joint removing tool or one that helps press and squeeze it back in I'm just using hammers, a block of steel some pretty basic stuff. This the way I've always did them. I've never worked in a garage so never knew what the tool even looked like. Never had any training. This is just how I figured out how to do it. So basic tools you can do it yourself. Well the pressed in style ball joint obviously doesn't have any flange with bolts on it. it just squeezes down around that round surface on the control arm. So I've removed the axle nut and the pinch bolt that goes on the clevis that grabs the shaft of the ball joint. Car's jacked up. Now I have this big long steel bar. It's made out of spring steel. It's a torsion bar from underneath the floor that goes to the front lower control arms of a old 19 early 80s front wheel drive Olds V8 Tor Toronado. Lots of different kind of cars use bars like that and the longer one you can find the better. You just go to the auto wreckers and get one chopped off for you with a torch. Sweet thing about those is because you're made of spring steel you can't bend them. They make the most awesome pry bar. So I stick it in this gap of the control arm down through that hole. It wedges itself against the control arm. I grab it and I push and pull down on it. Sometimes I even have to put an old brake pad in there to raise the bar up so when I'm prying down the bar doesn't hit the rotor so I can get a farther push on it. Like so. Pushing down on this extracts the clevis from the ball joint post. So now that I've pried that down this post slipped out of the clevis hole no problem. If it is tight you can help it with a pickle fork. That goes in there and pries it off. Got the axle out of the way. I've turned the steering wheel to go that way tied a piece of mechanics wire to my jack to keep everything out of the way. Now I'm just going to show you a loose ball joint is always a bad ball joint. You definitely want to change them before it's too late because you could be driving down the highway, hit a pothole, it completely separates, your whole spindle assembly like you see there exactly moves that way all by itself with the tire attached, gets jammed under the fender, buggers the fender up, gets caught on your door when you open it, then wrecks your door, rips your axle apart or pulls out of the transmission, you lose all your oil, sometimes <laughs> jams against there and even breaks more stuff and even can break the housing of your transmission and definitely can suck you into the opposite oncoming traffic or into the ditch, even cause you to roll over. So if you hear clunking and bumping or your wheels feel funny when you're turning corners or do a little zig, uh, definitely check your ball joints. Now next step is getting them removed. If the ball joint's been replaced before on a Chrysler, it has that little C-clip clip groove and a little snap ring clip on there. Well they're not hard to get off. You can use your snap ring pliers or just pry it off the screwdriver if you can throw it away. If it's a factory original ball joint, well then underneath here, right along the side, either there or there, you'll see about a quarter inch long line of MIG weld. Well it's kind of hard to unpress them and get them out with that weld there so you take your little hand grinder and grind it off. It's a stainless steel weld so it doesn't cut well with a torch. If you're putting in the kind of ball joint that doesn't have the little safety clip it's a good idea to rerun a little piece of weld along there but not that much as it'll melt the stuff inside the ball joint. These ball joints have a bit of a problem of sometimes coming loose by themselves. Off comes the clip. There we go. Next step. I use just a block of steel but you can use lots of different things. I put it under the control arm far enough back over here that the ball joint has a free space to fall out when I whack it with my mini sledge. Now my supporting steel block is under there. I've even added another little tiny block just to boost up the height. Now I s slowly lower the jack till about half the weight of, of the vehicles on the control arm and the control arm starts to lift up a bit. 
So, much of the weight on that block now. I've aimed the ball joint post to a handy spot so it's a good whack with a hammer. And I whack it hard and if the weld's cut and the clip's off, it shouldn't be that hard to pop out. So a couple of good hard whacks and she's out. Now I prefer to put a tiny bit of grease around that tapered edge there. And now I jack it back up again so the control arm is off the block. Then I move the block over and without installing the grease nipple yet, put the block on here and lower it down till the control arm is sitting about completely level so this thing can try to get itself in straight. So I've just set that ball joint in by hand. Now I'm just going to slowly lower the vehicle like I said. It'll be a fair bit of force on it. Then I'll be ready to pound it back in. Now the weight's on it. So that block's sort of pushing it up and holding it in. I've just got an ordinary socket on an extension. The trick to getting it to go back in is steering it in. You've got to pound it here and pound it here. If you think you might hit something and damage it with your hammer, well, they get an extension bar, solid steel or whatever, and hit your hammer up here and use the bar to knock it in here and here. And you can actually steer it with one hand to get it to go in straight while hitting with the other hand with the hammer. Wow, that went in really slick just first try. The more modern Chryslers don't have this stamped sheet metal control arm. They have the forged steel one, which is much thicker and tougher. And they're a little bit harder to get in, but the steering method and feeding at the same time with a hammer just works wonderful. Now to put the C-clip on and maybe even a dab of MIG weld again. Got the rubber seal on. Now to put the grease nipple on and make sure it points away from the wheel so you can get your grease gun on it easy. Now I'll put this shaft back in the hole. Rotate the spindle that way. Get your pry bar. Pry down the control arm again. And get that pin to go back in that hole. This can be done by yourself but it's much easier if you have someone pushing the bar while someone's steering this spindle to get it back in. Now that it's all bolted back together, don't forget to grease everything. And now that's all said and done, just a one beer job. Simple as that. Sweet.